Today we shoot people punching. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tomorrow's Filmmakers. My name is Justice McCraney, and now that we have learned about choreographing a fight scene, now it's time to actually go shoot it. So today we're going to take you on the set with us on our short film Clocked as we have the fist fight between both of our main characters in the kind of junkyard place that we have. So I'm going to take you with us. We're going to show you exactly how to shoot it. Shoot it. Shoo shoo. To show you exactly how to shoot a fight scene so you guys know exactly what to do whenever you go shoot your fight scenes. So let's learn how to do it. So before we actually start shooting, you want to make sure that your actors know the choreography down pat, which is the entire purpose of actually choreographing it before we actually came and filmed it. So you want to give your actors a little bit of time to just practice it, run it through, usually while I'm setting up my camera, getting all the stuff ready, they're off to the side, just practicing it, talking it through, making sure that they have it down pat so we can immediately start filming and they know exactly what to do. But no matter how many times you practice it, they will mess up on occasion, it's just kind of funny and you laugh it off and continue. Make sure that you also shoot in sections because you want to shoot in the sections that you choreographed in. So we choreographed in sections and we also want to shoot in those sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our actors come together and we're going to take that first section, that first ray of punches or whatever your section is, and we have them do that over and over and over again while we go around getting different angles. So I say, all right, come together and action. And they throw those six or seven punches or however long your section is. And we get that from a certain angle. Then we have them do it again. We move to a different angle. They do it again. We move to a different angle. They do it again. We move to a different angle. Usually you want to only have them do this like four or five times or however many takes it takes for you to get all the angles that you need. Because from a certain angle, not every single punch is going to look real, only certain punches will look real. That's why you take it in the editing room and take only the best angles from each different angle that you have and then put those all together to where the entire fight scene looks very real. But there is such a thing as getting too much footage. Because what's very easy to do is to think, okay, I don't know if this looks really, really good, so I'll just do like eight or nine different angles, hopefully getting the certain angle that I want. And that's not the right thing to do because your actors will get really tired of doing the same thing and they'll start to wear them out and then they won't want to continue. They'll be tired. They won't be as enthusiastic about it because every single time they move to a new section, you make them do it like 15 times and they're not very happy. So that's the reason we did the test angles during the choreography. So we know what angles look really, really good. Good. That way we can have them do it like three times, four times, maybe five at the most, and get those certain angles that we need. So have them do the section, but make sure not to do it too many times because they'll get really tired. Now, when shooting a fight scene, properly chosen angles are a necessity. They will make or break your fight scene because some angles obviously the punch is not connecting, but some angles they punch and you have a certain angle where it's just like, oh, that, that definitely hit him. He definitely got smacked in the face, even though he didn't. So make sure that all of your angles look very, very good and you get the angles that sell the fight scene the best. And because this is kind of a bigger subject, we did an entire video on punches and angles. So go check that out for more information. But I just want to let you know that whenever you're shooting, you need to keep that in mind because your angles need to be perfect. So make sure you choose the correct angles whenever you're shooting in sections. Now with a fight scene, unless you have a certain reason for this, you don't really need to be as adamant about keeping the 180 degree rule. I know that we've talked about staying on one side of the 180 degree line so it looks like they're facing each other, but in a fight scene, it's chaotic, it's chaos, you know, who's winning, who's losing, we don't know, people are just punching each other. We don't want to have that sense of security. We know he's from this side, we know he's this side. We want to be chaotic and okay, is he here? Is, I don't know, there's so many punches, they're punching each other. So you don't have to be as adamant about keeping that 180 degree rule. If you go over the 180 degree line and break the 180 degree rule, that's okay because it doesn't matter. It's chaotic. It's crazy. It's a fight scene. You're not supposed to feel secure. You're not supposed to feel like you know who is winning or who's losing because they're both fighting each other. You don't know who's going to come out on top. So you don't have to keep the 180 degree rule. Keep that in mind. 
Now be sure to capture audio whenever you're shooting this fight scene. I had a boom pole with a microphone on the end being able to capture all of that noise and foley that comes with a fight scene. Now with the audio here, you're not really capturing any dialogue or anything from their mouth. You're only capturing footsteps, the sound of their clothes rustling. Maybe if they grapple or grab each other, you have the clothes pressing together and moving around. You wanna capture all of those sounds. You wanna make sure that your actors stay quiet. Don't have them grunting and groaning you know, whenever they're punching, because we're gonna add all of that later. But they wanted to try it, so I said, all right, fine, try it one time, and it was horrible. Oh, oh. All right, one more time, that was good. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and it was actually hilarious because they can't do it. So I said, all right, be quiet, don't say anything, just punch. Because later we're gonna be doing a grunt pass, which means we're gonna bring our actors back, have them watch the video with a microphone, and then grunt whenever they punch or things like that, and it makes a huge difference so we're gonna add all that in later and we're gonna do a video on that as well. So you wanted to capture footsteps, clothes rustling, things like that, because even though there's gonna be punch sound effects and music and things like that, your brain automatically wants to hear footsteps, clothes rustling, and things like that, because if they're not there, you kind of notice them. So just be sure to get clothes rustling and footsteps because we're gonna add that in there later and it really sells the effect that it's real. And one of the major things to realize is that you need to stay safe. I mean, you're actually throwing punches at each other's faces, barely missing. So there's a chance that you might just actually clock someone in the face. Clocked. Get it? Clocked. There we go. <laughs> He totally just punched me in the chin. <laughs> so be very careful because we had a few close calls where they would like barely touch the chin or you know, you could feel the wind off of it or something really close. So just be very careful. And if you're doing some sort of crazy stunt, be sure that your actors are safe because a lot of the time you don't actually have to do a stunt. You can use editing and things like that to really cover it up. Like John throwing Scott onto the car. At the very beginning, we just did a bunch of shots from a different angles of John picking Scott up like he's about to throw him on the car. And he didn't actually throw him on the car, just picks him up about to throw him on the car. Then we could have done that exact same thing, have them get on the car and just kind of fall onto the car. And then whenever we edit it together, it looks like he slams it onto the car. We did the exact same thing whenever Scott grabs the Thor hammer out of the air. It looks like he's pulled right onto the ground, but we had Scott do is just kind of prop himself up and then fall to the ground. And whenever we cut it, it makes it look like he really fell hard. So you don't have to do crazy stunts to be able to pull these things off you can just use editing and things like that, so make sure your actors are safe. But because Scott and John were really excited and they really wanted to do it, they said, hey, let's try one time of me actually throwing Scott onto the car. And I said, okay, fine, you can do that. One time, which was not very smart and I would not recommend it. So John picks Scott up, throws him onto the car, and crushes the windshield. And action. Oh. It actually cracked the windshield. Oh my goodness, Scott. <laughs> Scott. Hey, you might, if you hit it hard enough, you might. No, it won't. Did it hurt? This is my shoulder. Is my, no, Did it hurt? Did it hurt? No. Okay. My head hurts. Oh, right. <laughs> my shoulder. Right. So I would not recommend you do that. That was very stupid. Not very smart at all. Scott could have really been hurt by that, so don't do it. But since he actually crushed the windshield, I had to leave it in there. So the actual shot in the scene of John picking Scott up and throwing him onto the car is the one where he actually crushes the windshield. You also can have your actors do something very slowly and then in the editing, speed it up and make it look real. You just don't wanna do a bunch of camera shake because then the camera shake will be sped up and it'll look really jittery. If you have your shot locked up on a tripod, you can have your actors go slowly and then speed it up and it'll look really good. We did this for John punching the windshield and actually cracking the windshield. Because I wanted to show his fingers actually touching the windshield and actually pressing against it, we couldn't really do that fast because he'd hurt his knuckles. So what we did was we had him do two punches, normal speed, and then the third one, he did it very slowly, touched the windshield, and then pulled back. That way, we could speed it up in editing and it would look very real and it would look like he actually punched the windshield. And then whenever we added the glass breaking as he punches it, it sells the effect, makes it look very real, even though we did it in slow motion. Now I'm not saying shoot it in slow motion, I'm saying for your actors to actually move slowly whenever they do it. 
So our actors know the choreography. So we start with the first section, have them do it four or five times, three or four times, however long it takes. We move around, get all the different angles that we need that we've already tested out whenever we were choreographing it. Then we move on to the next section, next section, next section, having a wonderful time, having fun, because this is supposed to be a lot of fun, capturing all the audio of the footsteps, clothes rustling, also making sure to stay completely safe because all the crazy different stunts that you have to do, you can use editing, different techniques, things like that to make it look real and not actually slam someone into a car and crush a windshield. That was not smart. Don't do that. So whenever you make your fight scene, post on the Tomorrow's Filmmakers community. We would love to see it. We're looking forward to it. So if you want to follow me on my social media stuff, you can go right here. So head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have videos just like this that we're putting out constantly to help you as you further God's kingdom through film. And I'll see you guys there.